Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Um, as you may have guessed by the cover picture and the title, this is a sit down video. Uh, and if you can't tell, I'm actually using my vlog camera and that's because I have already recorded this whole thing one time and, uh, and then watched the footage and found out it was all out of focus and I just didn't have, didn't have it in me to, uh, set up all the, um, all the gear that I usually use for filming. Um, a sit down video. This topic, this video was inspired by you and by the questions that you ask uh, all the time uh, in my Instagram messages and my email inbox. Um, and uh, basically it's a version of, I've been contacted by a client, they want me to provide a quote or tell them how much something will cost, what should I do? And um, yeah, so this, this video is going to be about the five most important things you need to ask a client five most important things to get clear on before you tell them how much a project is going to cost. So we are going to dive into that, those five important things. Uh, but uh, even though we're doing this coffee shop style, I still want to say thank you to my patrons who are sponsoring this video. And uh, they sponsor it financially. So a patron is somebody who gives anywhere from $1 to $15 a month. Uh, and what that support makes possible, I mean, I, I say this every week, I always say thank you, but I just want to be really clear um, to those patrons and to everybody who's watching this that what their support is is enabling is is these videos so um, you know I made videos for a few years now but as uh, as my business has grown and I've gotten busier and also as you will know if you watch uh, my channel regularly uh, started a family I have a two-year-old daughter and another one on the way um, yeah life and work have just gotten a lot more hectic so it was becoming harder and harder to find time to uh, to edit videos and I wasn't able to do videos every week. So uh, really the thing that has made it possible for me to do videos every single week, week after week for the last, I have to look at how long it's been. It's been at least a few months because I, I started with Meg, the video editor in the fall. And um, it is you guys, it's your support on Patreon that has made it possible for me to hire Meg. And, um, without that, I, you know, I would still make videos, but, um, but it wouldn't be every week. And, um, yeah, so I am so thankful. <laughs> I'm so thankful. This is going to sound cheesy, but I'm so thankful for you guys giving me the gift of being able to make this content for you. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I am so, I'm probably just a pretty thankful, grateful person in any way in terms of my temperament, but, um, I just feel like, yeah, I, I am so grateful to be able to do the work that I do, work that I love. Um, I'm grateful to be a, a full-time freelance illustrator. And then it just feels like this amazing icing on the cake that I get to share that with you all and can share my life through vlogs and, um, and share what I have learned uh, through sit-down videos and also through vlogs. Um, yeah, I, um, I just, I do genuinely love making videos and I love telling you guys what's going on and what I'm learning. And this world can be, this world of, of illustration can be really competitive and feel kind of isolating. And, uh, I just love doing whatever I can to dispel that and to get around that. And I, I remember too, like when I was first getting started, how alone I felt. And I, if I can do anything to help somebody feel less that way or feel less confused or more confident or, um, yeah, more a part of a community that is just the most amazing privilege and such an incredible gift. And I, yeah, I'm just blown away in gratitude by you all letting me do that, making it possible for me to do that because I, I would still make videos, but it just, it wouldn't be in the same way and I wouldn't be able to do it every week. So I just want to say thank you for, for helping me to be able to do that every week. So, um, yeah, sorry to get cheesy, uh, but, uh, it needed to be said. So, um, thank you. Thank you, uh, to my patrons. Uh, all right, so let's dive into our chat here. So uh, let's just set the scene a little bit and we'll, we'll say you are a brand new illustrator. You've just been putting your stuff out there for a little while, you know, maybe for a year or so, and you finally get that first email from a client uh, asking you to provide a quote. Or maybe you have had a couple of client projects, but they haven't quite gone as well as you hoped. And this next email comes through and you just have this sense like, oh, I need to handle this one a little bit differently. 
Um, either way, I feel like the first instinct whenever you get an email from the client is to like respond as quickly as possible with your interest and uh, a quote or a price estimate and just to try to lock it down as quickly as possible. So I just want to first encourage you to take a breath and yeah, feel that gratitude if that's how you're feeling um, and, uh, and feel the excitement uh, for the possibility of this project. But wait a second before you respond. And um, it's so important to uh, respond rather than responding right away with what your quote is going to be with how much you say it will cost. Um, you have some pretty important questions and pretty important information that you need to get from the client. So um, sometimes client emails, the first email will have all of the information that's needed. For me, I feel like that's maybe like 10 to 15% of the time, almost all the time, regardless of the client size, whether it's a tiny client or a big client, that first email is just like a very general we need some illustrations. How much will this cost? So uh, asking the questions is going to set you up for success. So uh, the first thing you need to be sure to ask is uh, what exactly do they want illustrated? I have some notes here, by the way, even though we're having a casual coffee shop conversation, I'm still going to look at my notes. Um, and this is kind of like a, a broad category. So um, you need to ask for as much specificity here as possible. So how many illustrations they want? Um, what are the subjects of the, of the illustrations? illustrations and for example like if they have said in their initial email like we want cake we want an illustration of cake you know a, a, some good follow-up questions would be like okay can you tell me how you want that composed or do you want like a slice of cake by itself do you want a slice of cake on a plate with a fork do you want a slice of cake on a plate with a fork with a whole cake in the background and maybe like a hand reaching down to uh to grab the fork and take a bite uh as you can imagine there's a pretty big difference in complexity and in the time it's going to take to execute the that uh, illustration that I just described with all those different components versus like just a single piece of cake on its own without any other stuff. So uh, getting really clear about exactly what they want illustrated and uh, along with that, whether they have any specific size requirements and whether they can provide you with some examples from your portfolio of uh, kind of style notes that are important to them. So if you have like a super like bang on consistent style and you're the same every single time, then this may not be as important of a question. But um, for myself, I, I would say I have a, a quite consistent style. However, <laughs> that being said, because of different clients and different budgetary constraints, Sometimes I work really large and do something like super photorealistic. And then other times I'm working pretty small, like five by seven and it's realistic, but it's not like uh, you wouldn't mistake it for a photograph. So uh, I still ask this as well. So I can get a good sense for what the client is looking like, why they, why have they come to me? Have they come to me because they saw this, you know, they, they like these small spot illustrations or have they come to me because they've seen these like massive packaging illustrations that are super realistic. Um, so yeah, asking if they can provide some examples from your portfolio about what they're looking for style wise will be really helpful. So uh, question number one, what exactly do you want illustrated? Okay. Question number two uh, is, how will these illustrations be used? So what you're trying to get a sense for here is just like, what is the end application? Where is the illustration going to end up? Is it going on a greeting card? Is it going on fabric? Is it going in a magazine? Uh, is it going on packaging? There's so many different ways that an illustration can be used and uh, getting clear about the use and how the sort of value that the client is going to get from that illustration, that's going to make it possible for you to price it accurately. And I will go ahead. I feel like I mentioned this in every video, but I'll go ahead and throw in a plug here for the graphic artist guild handbook for pricing and ethical guidelines. They do not sponsor this video or any of my videos, but they totally should because I talk about it all the time. Um, and if you can find out what exactly a client wants illustrated and how those illustrations will be used, you can use that information to just look it right up in the Graphic Artist Guild Guide. Do I have it right next to it? Oh, it's across the room. I'm not going to get it. But um, yeah, you can basically then just look it up and get a really good sense for a, a price range for that. So um, the end use is super important. And along with that, you'll want to ask how long they want to use the illustration for. Some of that may be kind of self-determined by the end usage, by where the illustration ends up. If it's a magazine, they typically will want it for anywhere from like 90 to 100 and 20 or 365 days. Usually it's a shorter period. Whereas if they want it for packaging or 
um, for a greeting card. It'll be a longer period of time. Um, so yeah, how will the illustrations be used in what context for how long and potentially you, you also want to ask where it would be used geographically, although that'll have some overlap with our next question. So, um, yes, question number two, how will the illustrations be used on to question number three, uh, how big is the client? And that's, that's when you want to be, um, diplomatic in how you ask. So I wouldn't just come right out and say, how big is the client? If you're, if your contact person is not the client, like if it's an agency or um, somebody who's representing the client, who's liaising with you on behalf of the client, uh, you can ask, uh, you could say like, can you tell me a bit about the client? Or um, yeah, can you tell me a little bit about the client? And if it's the client themselves, you could say, can you tell me a little bit about your business? And uh, essentially what you're trying to get a sense for here is say in the previous answer, we found out it's a magazine, we wanna know like, how big is the magazine circulation? Is it just a local publication or is it a national publication? Um, if it's a brand, is it a brand that is known in one area of the country or by like a specific niche group of people? Or is it a brand that's known uh, nationally or maybe even internationally? And uh, this again is important related to pricing because uh, I've used this example in other videos, but if you're doing packaging illustration for a mom and pop shop who are going to take their salsa to farmer's markets, they will get some value out of your illustration. Absolutely. And you should still provide them with like your best, your best quality work, your highest customer service, all of that. I'm not saying you should not treat them well. You, you should, you should treat all your clients as, as well and as kindly yeah, all that good stuff. Uh, however, if you, um, if you're making the same kind of illustration for, I don't know, like Tostitos or some giant brand that's going to sell this all over the world um, that tons of people know and recognize the brand, then that brand should pay you more because they are going to be getting a lot more use out of your uh, illustration. Just at a baseline level, they're going to reproduce it a lot more than the mom and pop shop would. So um, question three, how big is the client? All right. Uh, oh, and also I'm going to have all these questions down in the description box. So if you want to copy and paste them, you are more than welcome to. Um, question four, what is the timeline? So this one is, is pretty important as well, uh, both just for pricing and for your own mental health. Uh, if you don't ask this and you kind of get everything else down and, and you agree to it and then you find out like, oh, actually like I need this in three days. Uh, the, number one, it just may not be realistic. You may not be able to do it. Like if you have other work or you have other things that you've committed to. Uh, and number two, you know, if you have other things that you've committed to, but you still want to take it on, it's going to be really stressful and uh, that should impact and influence both your decision of whether or not you're going to do it and how uh, how much you charge. So if you have a lot of flexibility, if the client has a lot of flexibility and, you know, in my experience, clients always say that they need it like right away. But if you ask, is there any flexibility in your timeline? Um, then, and they will let you know, like maybe, okay, yeah, maybe I can take two more weeks beyond that. Or, you know, oh, maybe I'm super flexible and we only, we need this in like six weeks. That's going to give you so much more wiggle room. It's going to be less stressful. You can fit other work in around it. You can do it uh, at your, basically at your pace when you want to do it. So that's different than a client who wants something in 24 or 48 uh, hours, which does happen, especially if it's for a magazine. So um, asking upfront about the timeline. And then the last question, question number five, uh, this one is, it's the last one in the list, but in some ways it's the most important one to ask. And it's one that I myself am trying to be better about asking. It just, it, it can be hard to do and can feel kind of awkward. Uh, and that is, do you have a budget in mind? So uh, most of the time, I don't know, I, I should like take a survey and look through emails and see how long, how often this happens. But it's, it's pretty rare that a client will tell me their budget in the upfront, like the very initial email, maybe like one out of 10 emails that I get from a prospective client will, where they'll have like their, their budget, or they'll just say like, this is our budget. We're looking for X, Y, and Z illustrations. And this is our budget. Most of the time, the client is wanting you to provide the kind of first, um, the first volley. They want you to be the one who throws out that first number. And uh, some of that may be because they genuinely don't know how much it costs. But a lot of it, especially if you're working, if it's for a potentially larger client or a client who, um, 
who commissions illustrators on a regular basis, if they're asking you to provide a quote, it's because this is a negotiation and like I hate to get all like businessy about it because that's just not my natural speed, but I have had to develop those skills over the years and you will need to as well if you want to have a successful freelance career. And uh, so just keeping in mind uh, the fact that this is a negotiation and if you're the one who uh, says the first number, eh, there are some people who know about negotiations that say that that's the weaker position. So um, the the client may just be asking you for the number because they genuinely don't know, and they may be asking you for the number because they kind of want to see what you're going to say first, and then they can say, oh my gosh, well our budget was you know 25% less than that, <laughs> uh, whatever. So, um, so yeah, asking the client, do you have a budget in mind? Um, that can give you, uh, number one, it can encourage them to make the first move and it can also help give you a sense of, uh, whether this is a serious client or not. Having a sense of what the client's budget is, uh, that can just make it really qu a quick and easy question for you. You know, you're not going to spend, if you realize the client has a total, totally unrealistic expectations for a budget, then you can just address that up front and, and say like, you know, uh, okay, that's really helpful to know. Thank you. Um, for this kind of project, I typically would charge more in the range of this. Uh, and then just don't even spend time developing the rest of the, of the reply. Don't spend time on a timeline. Don't spend time on a contract. Like it just, it lets you kind of take care of that pretty quickly. And in the off chance that the client is willing to adjust their expectations and come back with a more realistic rate, then you can go from there. But either way, uh, asking is, is gonna be really helpful and will help you get that information up front. So occasionally when I've asked, a client has come back and said like, we prefer to just see what, what your rates are, what you say. And that feels a little bit weird. It feels kind of like, yeah, I don't know, it's like almost a little mini rejection, but uh, I still don't think it should stop you from asking. And for the most part, a client, the client will come back with something. Uh, and it just makes the process of going back and forth about pricing that much easier. And uh, on that note, if the client, I feel like I say this all the time too in videos, but I'll say it again because it's important. Um, if the client did happen to mention their price in the initial video or the initial video, the initial email, <laughs> or if you uh, asked if they had a budget and then they came back with a budget, um, that doesn't mean that you have to accept that. So just like if you quote a rate and the client will say, oh, like actually our budget is less, like is there any way you could come down? Um, just the same way that they are gonna say that to you, you should feel free to say it in the other direction to them. So maybe they did have a really fair rate and a, a perfect expectation of what this project should cost right from the beginning, in which case, you know, it's my, my opinion, you don't need to ask for more, um, but you certainly can if you want to because there is some subjectivity there. Uh, however, if they, uh, if they quote you, if they say that their budget is, you know, X number of dollars, and that's just not realistic for the project, for the type of work, the level of detail, the timeline, the size of the client, all of that, um, you can still say you can and should still ask for more. So, and a very polite, courteous, professional way to do that is just to say, oh yeah, again, thank you so much. That's really helpful to know for this type of project, for this type of scope, for this usage scenario, uh, I would typically charge more in the range of this. And if you're going to do that, you should make it a little bit higher than what your bottom line is, because you should expect that the client will then come back and say, oh, well, we can't do that, but we could do this. So you need to leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room for negotiation negotiation. Uh, yeah, so um, that is it. Those are the five really important things to get a sense for from a client before you give them a quote. And it's going to help you avoid asking these questions, being upfront about these five things. It's going to help you avoid that really uncomfortable situation where, uh, and, and I still do this. I was in this situation like two weeks ago where, um, well, it'll be longer than that by the time you guys see this video. But I was in this situation very recently where I had gotten an inquiry email from a client that was a big client and I was really excited and I 
was like, whoa, this is cool. I've wanted to work with this client for a long time. And they told me what their budget was and they said the number of illustrations that they needed, but they didn't say the subject. And, um, and I didn't ask. I was so excited that I just replied and said, yeah, budget sounds great. And um, I, because it was, a, it was a fair budget for certain kinds of illustrations. But then um, when I found out how complex the illustrations were, I would have definitely charged more. So if they had sent me the reference images and told me what they wanted illustrated, for sure, like 100%, I would have charged like quite a bit more than uh, than the rate that I agreed to. And at that point, you know, maybe people disagree and they feel like you could go back and say, actually, I need to charge more because, you know, now that I see the complexity, but I didn't feel right doing that. Um, so I just went ahead and, and stuck it out. And it wasn't egregious. It wasn't like, you know, if they had come back and said like, oh, actually, we want a full buyout, then I would have had no problem saying, well, they, you didn't disclose. Yeah, the, those are not the typical terms for this kind of illustration, whatever. I, I would have been okay with that. But anyway, I dug myself a hole because I agreed to it. I agreed to the project. I agreed to the budget before asking these questions. And uh, that's an uncomfortable position for you. And also I would make the argument that it's an uncomfortable position for the client because uh, if they are, it's, it's not good for them either to be working with an illustrator who feels like they've been, you know, put upon or taken advantage of or frustrated because they're not uh, getting paid as much as they should. So uh, you can look at it as you asking these questions. You're doing yourself a favor, but you're also doing the client a favor. So um, don't be afraid to do it um yeah what do they say like your put your courage to the sticking place or whatever you should feel empowered to ask these questions and uh ultimately it's going to make things better for you and the client in the long run so thank you for watching this video uh if you're new here please do subscribe uh if the video is helpful please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with somebody that you know who would be interested in this sort of thing with your art friends with other people who are trying to get started in a creative career um, yes, and that's it. And I hope you have a great week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.